Welcome back to the newest edition of the Grand Valley State Sports Report on WGVU. I'm your host, Jake Levy. GVSU continues to be the premier Division II athletic program in the country. And we thought, who better to talk about it than Athletic Director Carrie Becker? She'll join us in studio to highlight some of the things they have going on in Allendale. GVSU men's basketball split its weekend with a loss to Ashland Thursday, but came back strong against Wayne State on Saturday. Head coach Rick Wesley stops in to talk about his team. GVSU women's basketball has been locked in from the get-go this season. With two wins this weekend, associate head coach Phil Sayers joins us in studio to talk about their team. This is our last show as we head into holiday break. We'll be back on January 7th with all new episodes. In the meantime, we encourage you to head to GVSULakers.com to get great stories and game recaps on all Laker teams. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. The year has been an incredible one for GVSU athletics. In the fall season alone, we've had two national championship teams, a national runner-up, and every team qualifying for postseason play. Here to talk about GVSU and everything around the athletic department is Athletic Director Kerry Becker. And Kerry, let's start right there on the field. What a phenomenal start for the teams this year. Wow, I just had to hold my breath and hold on and, and then just watch. Get out of the coach's way, get out of the student athlete's way and just watch and enjoy what I was seeing out on the field in terms of soccer and men's and women's cross country. And it was a, in football with every team making the postseason. It was an exciting one. Let's start with that football team. A 10 win season for those mm -hmm. Lakers. We have a senior in Bart Williams, a great senior class. Tell us about that football team this year. Well, you know, you go into the year and you have the expectations in different positions. Coach Mitchell and I have some good conversations about what he expects to come out of different units and then to see some surprises out of you know the defensive unit knowing that our run game you know losing the running backs that we did last year and then being able to continue to do what we do offensively um, that's a tribute to the senior leadership on the field and Bart Williams and able to figure out how to make plays. Now let's go to the other three teams that got to go to mm -hmm. that fall festival in Pittsburgh. You were there. Tell us about that experience. Oh, it's a great one. I love the fall festivals of Division II do, especially when we can have multiple teams there. Men's and women's cross country qualified for the national championships. Soccer made another run to the final four and into the, into the runner-up position. And when you can do that all one weekend, uh, it's a little bit chilly, but when you're running around on the cross country course and then you get involved in the excitement of the soccer game, you kind of forget that it's 35 degrees. How about the staying power of those two programs as well? Jerry mm -hmm. Baltus now with 11 national championships between track and cross country mm -hmm. and then Jeff Hostler, 17 new faces this year and still they find their way back to the yeah. final four. You know, that, again, that's a tribute to the coaching staff and their ability to continue to recruit quality student athletes who come here and have a great experience, perform on the field uh, athletically, academically, and just are good stewards of the Grand Valley brand. And so, same thing with Coach Hassler, to be able to sustain success is really hard. Uh, there's one thing about climbing your way to the top. There's a certain other um, difficulty with staying at the top, and it's a tribute to their ability to do that with uh, new faces and team cultures, um, with uh, retaining senior leadership. Um, you know, when you think of soccer, uh, a very young squad with uh, Tara Learman being kind of the lone senior, getting a lot of playing time. It's very optimistic in terms of the future. And then Jerry and, and Aaron, Wa Jerry Baltus, Aaron Watson's ability to sustain and find those runners and, and then develop them. From It's amazing to watch their maturity uh, physically from their freshman year to their senior year uh, and just do a, continue to do a great job. So we talk about on the field stuff, but off the field is just as important as mm -hmm. part of a student athlete at Grand Valley State. Mm -hmm. The academic success rate came out last week, number one in the GLIAC. What does that mean to you? I, I think it, it tells me that our coaches, again, are recruiting those quality student athletes that can be successful here on and off the field. In the end, we want them to graduate. Um, and then if we can get some great athletic achievements and get both, Heck, that means where our coaches are doing a great job finding that uh, student athlete that can be successful here with the academic rigor of our programs and also on the field. Because again, it's not easy to do. Uh, so we try to, you know, as administrators, we try to give our coaches 
uh, the resources they need to give our student athletes the best chance for success both on and off the field. And that's evident by the efforts of the student athletes utilizing those resources, but also getting it done in themselves. Seven teams with a 100% success rate and then mm -hmm. every other team above the average of the mm -hmm. GLIAC. So mm -hmm. to be as successful as we are on the field and mm -hmm. off the field mm -hmm. at the same time, that's not an easy thing to do. No, I mean, again, it's, it's um, it means that we're getting kids that have the prior, their priorities straight. Um, and the ones that maybe get off kilter a little bit, that's where we have the Laker Academic Success Center with Dr. Arnold and his staff uh, to help nudge them back on the right track, again, towards the ultimate goal of graduation. Because if they're not uh, progressing academically, they're not gonna be on the field. So there's also that carrot as well. And I think our coaches do a great job balancing that. There are a lot of programs in that athletic department. A new one is Lakers Listen. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what that's going on with the yeah. student athletes right Lakers now? Listen, we're, you know, we're finding that more and more students are matriculating to Grand Valley and they, they they, they're having um, some mental health, not disorders, but they're dealing with more mental health things than they ever have before. Whether it's anxiety, depression, or even some of the more serious things, what we developed and we needed and we knew it was happening with, even within our student athletes. Uh, and then dealing with the expectations of achievement and those things academically, but also athletically. We wanted to, Gretchen Goodman, our athletic health care administrator with the work of our student athlete advisory committee, uh, put together uh, a Lakers list and a platform where student athletes are talking to student athletes. And it's a space where they can have these conversations and know that they're not alone. To take the stigma away from mental health issues and, and giving the student athletes the resources and the tools they need to cope with the expectations they place on themselves and I think others place on them, whether it's parents or peers. Um, and, and then giving the tools to cope because it's not just about taking the stigma away, but also coping with it and being able to continue to achieve. And so Lakers Listen was the student athletes um, platform for doing that. And then finally, Carrie, I couldn't let you get out of here without talking about the great partnership that our athletic mm -hmm. department has with Make-A-Wish, mm -hmm. all the great stuff. We saw that awesome re wish reveal at mm -hmm. the football game. Mm -hmm. What does that partnership mean to you in this athletic program? One, I love that we give back locally. That means a lot to me. And, I, and the fact that our student athletes uh, want to give back locally to be able to make a, be a part of the overall Division II effort of Make-A-Wish nationally, but their efforts to give back to the Michigan Make-A-Wish make uh, mean a lot. And, and then for them to see it uh, in the in the eyes of that little six-year-old what that all that time and effort that goes into and, and and I think it rejuvenated the sack and I think the student athlete advisory committee is well on their way and I think it has already hit their ten thousand dollar mark so getting ready to hopefully do another reveal and that just it fills the hearts of our student athletes it gives them that out of the classroom, off the field sense of accomplishment that I think is important to this generation. It sure is. Well, thank you for your time here today and congratulations on a great start to the 2018-19 season. Some great student athletes in your department. You bet. Thank you. When we come back, we'll hit the hardwood as we talk with Rick Wesley after this on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. The number 24 ranked GVSU men's basketball team split its weekend with a loss to Ashland Thursday, but finished up with a dominant performance against Wayne State on Saturday. Here to talk about his team is head coach Rick Wesley. And coach, let's start with that ranking. Congratulations in the national polls for the first time this year. How does that feel? Uh, well, it's good. It's, uh, you don't get there unless you've had some success. We've had some good early success. Obviously, our goal is to be ranked somewhere at the end of the year. So uh, it's a good start, but we've got a long ways to go. Let's talk about those games this weekend, starting with the Ashland game quickly. 74 to 63. Offense maybe didn't play the way you want to. Tell us about that game a little bit. Well, Ashland's a very good team. We knew we were uh, going to have to play our best to have a chance to win. Uh, they're big, strong, athletic, and, and you know, we, we had a pretty good start. But overall, we just didn't play well offensively in this game. Uh, we've been putting up pretty good numbers offensively this game. It, it just felt like uh, you know they got us playing more one-on-one -on -one than we have in the past. The ball didn't move. Uh, we just weren't crisp in anything we did. And, um, you know, against a good team like Ashland, that's, that's not going to get the job done. Sometimes something like that, though, can be a wake-up call. Do you feel like that was maybe the effort for this team this week? Well, no question. I mean, and even this game, to our guys' credit, uh, we got down, but we came roaring back. Uh, we cut it to three, I think, with two minutes to go and had a chance. And I just kept telling the guys to have played that poorly, to have a chance against a team like that continues to make me feel 
that uh, we can be a good team. We talked about it a lot on Friday, uh, what we needed to do better, and certainly responded in a big way on Saturday. You know, it was kind of interesting. Last year at Ashland, you guys hit that three to tie the game late, only for Wendell Davis to come back and hit the three on the other end. This week, it was Hunter Hale with the three to cut it down to three, but Roderick Caldwell was just fantastic from the outside. Yeah, and that's, that was probably the disappointing thing. We wanted to keep, uh, keep them on the outside, make them shoot a lot of threes, which they did. They shot 33s, but... Uh, we didn't want Caldwell to shoot three. <laughs> he was our best three-point shooter, and he got off 11 of them. So, you know, defensively, we did a lot of good things, but uh, that was probably the single biggest uh, mistake we made, just not uh, keeping track of him very well and allowing him to get off shots. He's a tremendous player, and uh, he's having a great year for him. Then you turn around and face Wayne State. They had just one win, but it was over the defending national champions in Ferris State. And you know that every game with Wayne State is a knockdown, dragout game. So to beat them by 33, that's, did you see that coming? Uh, no, no way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, and even their record, I, I, that meant nothing to me. I mean, they, you look at the scores that they've played. Uh, they've been in every game. Game. They, they had a tough game with Davenport at Davenport on Thursday, so uh, we expected this to be a typical uh, knockdown drag out affair with Wayne State, and, and our guys just really played well. Probably our best game of the season in terms of um, just overall offensive execution. We really shared the ball well. Everybody that came in, Justin Greeson came in, had a tremendous game off the bench. Uh, Shaquan MacArthur, Ben Lewis came in, hit a big shot. Uh, Stephen Lloyd. I mean, our bench really played well in this game, and, and our starters uh, certainly picked it up from the effort that they had on Thursday. I, I, here's Jeremiah Ferguson, too. Probably his best uh, floor game, I would say, just in terms of running our offense and distributing the ball. It was a fantastic game, a slow start, but nonetheless, you guys turned it on really well. Before the game, an emotional moment. I'll give you a chance to talk about Melissa Moderman, who I know means a lot to you, means a lot to this program. So to get that win for her probably felt pretty good. Yeah, no question. Uh, Joe and Melissa, I've known them since they were in high school. I recruited Joe to play for us at Iowa State. When I came back here to Grand Valley, uh, he joined our staff and in coaching when a a uh, guy joins your staff, his wife joins your staff, and Melissa has been such a big part of everything we've done at Grand Valley, and just a real pillar in our community in Allendale, uh, really a, a tremendous gal with a great smile and a, a wonderful heart, uh, two and a half year struggle with cancer, never complained once, and was a real fighter. So. We wanted to honor her and, and her competitive spirit, and I'm so happy we were able to get the win. And uh, this week we'll be thinking about her as well as the entire Moderman and Jones family. That win moves you to 7-2 and two as you go into the winter break schedule. But you guys aren't taking any vacation here going down to Quincy for this Subway Holiday Invitational. Tell us about these teams we got coming up. Well, they're good teams, and that's why we put them on our schedule. Uh, GLVC teams, so they're just like GLIAC teams. We need to continue to try to build our resume for postseason play. Uh, it's three games in four days, so it, it'll be a, a chance for our depth, hopefully, to, to uh, uh, step forward and help us out. Uh, I like where we're at. Um, hopefully exams won't suck the life out of us this week, and we'll come back and finish it up well before Christmas break. Quincy was a one-point game last year. Can we expect more of the same this year? Yeah, you, I'll be honest with you. I don't know that much about them. Uh, we've got all week, so it's a little bit of take a, a breath today uh, and, and regroup. But uh, they're always big. They're always strong. They're always very physical, and uh, I would expect the same this year. And then finally, Truman State coming up that back end, the third game in four days. That should be a really tough game down in Missouri. Y yeah, they've got a good team. They've had a good team. They really move the ball well. Uh, we've never been there to Kirksville before, so a little bit of a travel challenge. And, and again, that last Last game before guys go on a break because it always makes you nervous that uh, uh, you know they're one step out the door. But if we could finish this uh, next trip off and, and get these wins, we'd really be in great shape going into the holidays. Certainly in a great shape in GLIAC, three and one start. Congratulations on the start, coach. Thanks for coming down this week. All right, thank you. When we return, we'll catch up with women's basketball associate head coach Phil Sayers as the Grand Valley State Sports Report rolls on here on WGVU.
The GVSU women's basketball team did it all this past week as they cruised to a huge victory over number one ranked Ashland Thursday, then kept the good vibes going with a win against Wayne State Saturday. Here to talk about the games is associate head coach Phil Sayers. And coach, let's start with that Ashland game, a 33-point win against the number one team in the nation. Yeah, uh, unexpected for sure. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a great environment. We had a great week of practice leading into it, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to be a part of, that's for sure. You know, all through the preseason, we kind of heard the girls talking about December 6th. You kind of knew it was on their calendar, especially after the way last year went. Mm -hmm. Could you get the vibe that they were ready for this game from the moment this season started? Yeah, and I, and I thought you kind of felt it amp up a little bit come Monday at practice, too. Just their, their focus, uh, kind of the energy that was in the gym was a little bit different uh, than we've had in previous weeks. And so I thought they kind of came in that way, ready to be prepared uh, to get ready for the game on Thursday night. And I thought uh, that's one of the big reasons why we had a chance to be so successful was because of how we practiced. One player that really stepped her game up, Jen DeBoer, and she was maybe one of those players that had that Ashland game circled for a while. She comes out, hits six threes, had 32 mm -hmm. points. What can you say about your junior point guard? Well, she keeps stepping up, and she continues to be challenged. You know, here's a kid who, who last year against Ashland had a game where she was 0 for 3 and didn't score at all, uh, you know, last time we played them at, at, at home. And so for her to come out with a 32-point game, I thought she just had an edge to her. I thought she had a confidence in, in what she did. She really hunted shots early uh, and kind of looked to get to the basket. And I thought that she just – she controlled the tempo of the game too. With their pressuring defense uh, to, to do what she did, taking care of us, getting us into what we needed to, needed to run, I was really impressed with her and just her, her consistent level and defensively what she did as well. I mean, we look at those points and it's one thing, but I thought the job that she did defensively on their point guard uh, was outstanding as well. Yeah, you look at that hot start, jump out to an 8 nothing lead all of a sudden. That had to be huge in a game like this. Well, it is. I think you start to, all the outside noise that has been created by everybody about this game and to come out and kind of play so so great from the beginning, which we hadn't been doing well uh, at all. Uh, <laughs> our last four games, we weren't playing that way. And so to come out with that start was, I think, key for our kids to feel confident, uh, to be excited. And I just thought that that definitely uh, catapulted us to a great run. And then a player that maybe doesn't get the headlines, but V Headmark had 14 points, also had four steals. She was so active on all ends of the court. You can't say enough about the kid. I mean, she's as tough as they come. And a kid that uh, was balanced through some injuries a little bit. And great job by our training staff getting her ready to play on Thursday. And I thought that she battled, uh, was positive, and just there, you weren't, we weren't going to keep her out of the game if we had any chance of it. She was going to play. And uh, I thought she just battled, made some big time shots, and, and really got us going with the first uh, first score of the game. Was put her head down, got to the basket, and laid it in, which is what V does. You talk about the bench and looking for that depth in the guards. And I think Taya Andrews this week took a huge step forward, and yeah. her coming in as that third guard. Is that fair to say? Without a doubt, you know. And, and uh, we were without. Megan Belke on Saturday, and so Taya had to step up again in that game. But here's Taya. She's, she's knocking down shots. Uh, defensively, she's uh, improved her game so much. Uh, just being bought in the defensive end uh, has, been, has been good to see. The Lakers win 94 to 61 over Ashland. You worry about a little bit of a hangover after a win over the number one team in the nation, but none the case. 73 to 42 over Wayne State. Were you very proud of the way your girls responded and came back to get up to play on yeah. Saturday? Yeah, for sure. I wasn't worried about them being excited to play. I was worried about how were our bodies, bodies respond and our minds respond. Just the emotion that went into Thursday night. And I thought Coach Mike did a great job on Friday at practice of really calming back our bodies and just kind of really walking through a lot of things, which isn't the normal. We normally go shorter on Friday, but uh, we went uh, we went pretty light and just kind of mentally walked through some things in his own creative way uh, to get us ready for Saturday. And I thought our kids responded. Uh, they were bought into the scouting report for Saturday's game. And to come out again, another great start. You know, another great start in that game uh, was really important for us. And we got a couple rolls off, off uh, some shots to start off with. But it was great to see Maddie Daly uh, score. After a game on Thursday where uh, she wasn't great offensively but held the player of the year on the nation last year to, to, to 10 points only, she came out and really did a good job of asserting herself in the paint. Uh, and getting herself active around the glass, which was fun to see. Yeah, it was a great turnaround for her, and it was a 20-6 to start after the first quarter, so a great start for the team, great start for Cassidy Bench. And I, I withheld talking about her for the Thursday game. You have to save it for the triple-double she had on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, forget just the double-double she had on, uh, on Thursday night. But, yeah, it comes out with a triple-double, first one in a, in a long time here uh, with blocks, uh, points, and, and rebounds. And, and honestly, um, it was four assists, a short, uh, four assists short of that quadruple-double. And uh, w watching the film, we actually had two or three chances to get her some more assists, and we just missed some shots and missed some layups, but it would have been funny to see that. But, you know, a kid that just asserts herself so so well and doesn't try to force things and such a good, becoming such a good passer for us now, too. Uh, she's talented, and uh, and we're thankful that she's here with us. Yeah, I think that's seven straight, at least double-doubles now and throwing a triple-double as well. She's been incredible. All right, so now you carry into the winter break schedule. You've got two non-conference games. Come tell us about Central State. Yeah, Central State's really athletic, uh, really athletic. Like, love the pressure of the ball on defense. We're going to get ready for that this week. We kind of scale back a little bit with 
finals happening. Uh, but just, they do a great job getting the ball. Uh, they'll trap you. They'll kind of get it, get up in your space a little bit. We have to handle that pressure. Uh, and then they like to run an offense. So we're going to have to be ready to go for that. And then we have Bellerman coming in, who's a, a big in-region uh, team who has, uh, who's been playing our, our league well this year. And uh, we're going to be ready for them to go with, and stay focused with that holiday break uh, and the horizon. Stay focused and get hopefully get two wins here at home before we all uh, – go our own separate ways for a while. Yeah, how do you manage that? Because the last two weeks, you just got into the GLIAC rhythm of the Thursday, Saturday. You know when you're playing. You know you're playing GLIAC mm -hmm. opponents. Now you go into a kind of a herky-jerk, working with finals, working with off-period. How do you kind of balance that and get the girls refocused next yeah, week? Yeah, we've, we've mapped our whole schedule out here. So we're, we're, we're basically viewing next week, Monday, Wednesday, as if it's a Thursday and Saturday. And so all of our off days, we're play, you know, looking at, okay, we usually go three days on and then play a game, have a day off, play a game. So we're going to do that same thing. So we're kind of viewing uh, this week, Thursday as Sunday, kind of taking it off and kind of keeping that same schedule schedule of those six days, kind of three days practice, game, day off, and a game. So uh, I, I we, we have to do that. We also have to get healthy, you know, and get our kids rested. Our kids are uh, high, high GPA kids as well, so at least this finals is an important time for them. So we have to manage that as well this week, and I think our kids will do a good job bouncing back next week. Well, they certainly got off to a great start, 4-0 and heading into 2019 in the GLIAC. Congratulations, Coach. You got those two games at home at 1 o'clock. Hopefully get a crowd out there. Try to wrap up the calendar year strong. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. Next up, we'll take a look at the GVSU swimming and diving team after this on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. The GVSU swimming and diving team heavily recruits international students in its efforts to continue to be one of the best programs in Division II. Tom Cleary has the story. After a strong showing at the Caledon Invitational, Andy Boyce's men's and women's swimmers now begin a holiday break that ends two days after Christmas when the squads head to Florida for their mid-season training trip. While the women were victorious at the three-day Calden event that ended December 1st, the men were a close second behind conference rival Northern Michigan. The men had an impressive 1-2 finish in the 1650 freestyle as sophomore Moritz Bartels of Germany shaded his friend and training partner Jesse Goodyear, the Laker freshman from Australia. We got like four distance boys, including me, right now and I've never really trained with a solid distance group before. So we got a German Moritz on the team and him and I constantly push each other and I've never experienced having that push, it's like someone pushed me, it's mainly me against the time and the coach, but having him next to me is constantly pushing me. And we always have a good like little battle when we're racing in the water. And it's just, it's really fun having him there to train with all the time. A real spirit on our team, a uh, real positive uh, attitude about everything he does. Uh, he was so excited to see snow the other day for the first time, you know, it's, it's, he's just real excited about everything. It's all new to him and uh, hopefully you can keep that, uh, that attitude uh, all the way along for all four years for him. Bartels is not the only notable German swimmer on Boyce's squad this year. Senior Lara Deibel excelled at the Calvin meet, swimming the anchor leg for the winning 800 freestyle relay team, and then going on later to pick up a pair of second place finishes in the 200 and 400 IM. At 23, Deibel is back for her second stint at Grand Valley after having to return home to Germany for a year and still thinks about her first trip ever to West Michigan. I think coming to a new country and having a team of 60 people right away is much easier than just being a student because you have all that support. Funny thing was when I went to the airport for the first time, my mom was like, should I come with you? I don't really know where you're going. I'm like, mom, it's kind of late now. So can't do anything about that anymore. But yeah, the team is a great support and it made it much easier, I think. Yeah, sure. Laura gets it done in the classroom as well as in the pool. And uh, she's been to nationals two times before. We're hoping to make it a third time this year. And, uh, really specializes in, in uh, mid-distance freestyle and uh, I am breaststroke. And she's a staple on all of our relays. So uh, it's been great to have her here, a good influence on our team and uh, an extremely hard worker. While Grand Valley's men's divers have been among the nation's best for the last few seasons in Division II, this year the Lakers may have a national title contender in Michaela Karasik. Last year she was the national runner-up in the one-meter competition and is looking to repeat her two top ten finishes at the Nationals in 2019. 
each year she, she continues to improve and get better and, and climb up the national ranks, getting better on both the one and three meter on the national level, as well as in the conference, being one of the top divers in the conference and one of the top divers in the nation. So uh, we're real excited to see how far she can go. She has two more uh, conference and national championships with us. So uh, she's, she still has room to learn some new dives and perfect her skill. For uh, divers, we do a lot of working on new dives towards the beginning of the season. Now we're starting to get into um, reps and practicing them. So I think that, yeah, I think that I'm, we're doing pretty well. And then the divers as a whole, um, the girls that have been been practicing, we've been been seeing great improvements in the freshmen. And I think that we're setting up for good results at the end of the season too. When the Lakers swimmers and divers return from Florida at the end of the month, They'll jump right back into competition at home against Wayne State January 5th. After a trip to Ohio to face Finley, the Lakers get back to West Michigan to swim at Davenport against their Nucleac rival, as well as the University of Indianapolis. For the Grand Valley State Sports Report, I'm Tom Cleary. That's all the time we have this week on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. GVSU women's basketball will take on Central State on Monday, December 17th. The men's basketball team heads to Quincy, Illinois for the Subway Invitational this Saturday, where they'll take on McKendry, then take on Quincy on Sunday. GVSU swimming and diving will return to the pool on January 5th to take on Wayne State. The track and field team will be back at the Kelly Family Sports Center on January 11th for the Bob Eubanks Open. For a complete schedule of all Laker games, as well as stories across the entire athletic program, visit gvsulakers.com. To see more of this show, head to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updated video and highlights all year long. This show will return on January 7th to bring you more of the Grand Valley sports you love. For the entire crew here at WGVU, I'm Jake Levy. Have a great week, Laker Nation, and anchor up.